Hello, everybody, and here we are with the grand finals of today. It's been such a long journey. Five rounds of Swiss, semifinals, qu or quarterfinals, semifinals, and now we are here in the grand finals. The journey everybody has made here for the 50 points to go towards potentially going to Worlds here. And wow, this Pokemon mid-season showdown, the first one of this weekend, has been amazing. And Eric... What a day it has been. It has been an intense day, and all of these competitors have done a ton of work to get here. Looking at our final say, we have Charles Moses versus Derevon Soup, as he likes to be called here. His <laughs> last name's a little long. We'll go with Derevon Soup. This is an exciting team. Both these players, 4-1 and one in their regular seat in their Swiss formats. We did see Derevon lose in his round on stream, but now he's coming back for revenge. He wants his comeback. He wants that victory. Yeah, he has been playing very, very well to get here. And now we're just about to see it. And there is <laughs> a little sneaky plushie there. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we're going to go back over to the teams there. And there are the trophies. Those are the ones they're playing for. They Look are. at that. Gold and silver. Who's going to get the gold one? Who's going to get the silver trophy? That is all up in the air right now. As you can see, they're discussing, you know, it's just getting hyped. And it's good vibes all around. But yeah. now, it's a very tense competition nonetheless. And overall, I'm excited to see Darvon Soup really show his true colors. Because the one showing we did see from him wasn't his best showing. I think that was like one of the few games he did end up losing. So other than that, he's been on an amazing win streak so far. Oh, absolutely. I'm excited to see how this one all shapes up. But doing a quick review of the day, I think we saw Olivia start off. Was that against Darvon? I do believe so. Yeah. I think No, that was against Silas. Yes, that was against uh, Silas Brooks there. And... That was an interesting match. Olivia ended up winning that one 2-0. And we had a few 2-0s throughout the day. I believe the next one was a 2-0. I think that one might have been the one Darevon was Yes. On. Darevon, we saw second on stream Unfortunately. there. And that was an unfortunate 2-0. And then the next game was Charles with, I believe, our first three... Uh, or game three. Yeah. And it was the crazy... The crazy the reverse sweep. <laughs> crazy reverse sweep. A burn, a crit. You know, just that little things that you need to get that far. Yeah, both these players have put a ton of work today. And now, let's go over the teams and see what's mm -hmm. going to make them stand out today. Looking over at Chris's team first, we have that Glamora. We have Chi Yu, Urshifu, Single Strike, Fluttermane, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, and Tornadus. Yep. Over on Derevon's team, we have Tornadus again. We have Urshifu Single Strike as well. We have Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. We have the Blood Moon Ursaluna, the Phrygraph, and that Iron Hands. So one Pokemon that's been prevalent amongst all of our teams today is Ogre Pond. No matter what, no matter which team you are, Ogre Pond exists. He, it's there. It is dealing damage. It has been the MVP of this tournament. Yeah, Ogre Pond is inevitable. And... This time, there is going to be a little bit of a difference here with the Ogre Ponds. We have the Wellspring on the side of Charles, and then we have the Hearth Flame on the side of Darvon Soup. So, it's going to be quite interesting. Just looking at these teams, very similar, but it's very interesting to see Darvon Soup, because on one hand, he has half of his team that wants to go fast, speedy. Go there. You don't want Trick Room down. You just want to blitz to the end there. Yeah. And on the other side, you have some really slow Pokemon. Ursula Luna, Blood Moon, Iron Hands, and you have Freer Giraffe trying to set up that Trick Room. So, no matter how you cut it, there's going to be somebody on this team that is in a zone that they don't want to be in. Either they're in a tailwind, they're slow, and they're not where, really where they want to be. Or, you're with the Trick, trick Room. Yeah. But the thing you have to think about, Charles just played this team. That's true. This is, He's familiar. This is almost the exact team he just played. So we'll see if he takes all the things he learned. He learned not to bring Chiyu. Maybe Chiyu isn't really great here, so no need to bring Chiyu. We'll see that Glamora. The one thing that is really interesting, Stella Terra Iron Hands. A very interesting oh, yeah. Stella Terra type has been weird. We haven't seen it. We've seen it used twice on someone's team. We saw Dark last time, but this time it's going to be Stellar on the Urshifu. Actually, I think both and the times, Iron Hands. I think both times we saw Stellar was Darevon when he used it. Right. I think both times he used the Stellar Terra type. So it'll be interesting to see if he's taken those different those 
past experiences and learn to evolve them properly. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Stellar, not widely used, not widely embraced just yet, but they has some strengths, some weaknesses. Just strange to play, play around. Meanwhile, Terra is just very strong in the defensive coverage it also offers. Yeah. I think also the big difference here that's going to separate these two is how they use Ogre Pond. We see Chris with the Water Ogre Pond playing that more support role. As we jump into the battle, we see that Water Ogre Pond alongside the Glamora there, facing off against Daravon with his Farigraph and Iron Hands. Yeah, this is interesting here. Definitely going to get a Trick Room up on the side of Daravon. Now Charles has a few key choices he can make. Does he go with the defensive spiky shield out of the gate once again? Or does he know the setup's coming and try to eliminate one of these? Out of the There's gate? the fake out. Fake out into the Glamour, dealing that little bit of chip damage. But again, it's setting up that toxic debris. Yeah. You kind of have to try and fake out this Glamour. Try and stall out that meteor because you don't want to lose one turn one. I Ivy Cudgel just, just does, gets the, the, flinch. Oh, the flinch. The flinch. We knew the flinch was happening because of the fake out. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. I thought that was a flinch on <laughs> I, I for some reason. Else. It's a long day. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been wild. But here we are. Trick Room is up. Now this Iron Hand is going to be the first one to make the move. And it, honestly, it's going to force the defensive play to come out on the side of Charles. It's kind of forced to spike the shield here. Do you double spike the shield? Do you try and use Meteor Beam? Do you have a few interesting The double spiky shield is a little risky here. But it's the safest choice. The safest choice here, though. It will bait out that, that extra turn of Trick Room, which could be very useful. But he looks like he might just be full sending it into the Horn Leech. Does he not even spike his shield once? It, he doesn't. He's going to Meteor Beam and Horn Leech. He's going to withdraw the Fingerath into the Blood Moon? No, into the Urshifu. Interesting. Interesting. Poisoned. Any of the poison from that Toxic Breed that was set on the ground earlier. Close combat. Doesn't kill, I don't think. Does no not take out the Glamora. Lower Iron Hand's defense and also set up that po that full Toxic Spikes now. And the Horn Leech is gonna hurt from this Ogre Paw now with the defense. Lowered. There's the Meteor Beam set up. All right, which one did he shoot? I think he shot the Urshifu, no? I'm pretty sure they targeted the Urshifu, yes. It's not gonna be super effective, but it still gives him the special attack boost. It will still hurt, oh, yeah. That missed. It missed! Urshifu dodged the attack. That is the first time we have seen it miss almost all day today. That is game changing there. All right, now Charles in an awful position. Doesn't get landed, but now he can try and take out this Iron Hands. You almost debate if you're a Charles, do you spiky shield here? You want to block that damage, stall that trick him again, but he looks like he's just going to fully go into it. Going in for the kill right now. Going in for the knockout. There it Terra. is. Let's see this stellar type. It's going to be stellar no matter who it goes on. Just which one did he pick? Is it Iron Hands with the Trick Room? or No, it is Urshifu. stellar type Urshifu. Interesting. And with this Trick Room, though, this Urshifu is going to be one of the slowest ones on the field. Yeah, it is here, which is interesting. Glamora goes down, though. Iron Hands. Another close one. combat from Iron Hands. All right, now looking at the other side here. Let's see. There's the Ivy Cudgel. Into the Urshifu. Does not take out the Urshifu. But a lot of damage is invested. Urshifu will close combat with the Stellar Terra type, getting that boosted damage. Does not take out the Ogre Pond, though. It is not enough. But it is enough if that Iron Hands wanted to target into it. And now, it's looking very risky. Charles still has Spiky Shield. If he wanted to stall a little bit longer, he definitely could. Yeah, he really hasn't used Protect to stall out the Trick Room. He's sort of just playing with it. Now he can stall the Trick Room and also try and stall out this Poison just a little bit further. Yeah, that is very true. I wouldn't be shocked if we see the Iron Hands get a little greedy and try and attack into that Ogre Pond. I think that is the perfect time to drop. I don't know if this Dazzling Gleam is the play. You might want to go on the defensive. Just try and stall out this Trick Room. But then again, Urshifu is going to be moving last in this rotation. Actually, yeah. no, it's going to be Fluttermane moving last, but second last. Let me go Urshifu. I think maybe a defensive play would have been the right decision, but yeah. it looks like Charles does not want to let up on the attack. Charles is looking very offensive here. It's a little scary. If it works for him, great. He but if terrored. it doesn't, a big chance this could be the end of the game for him. Terra Flutter. There it is. Now, will this damage be worth it? 
Goes with it attacked on the Urshifu. The wild charge into the Ogre Pond. Takes out the Ogre Pond. And now it's going to get glitter the, the, the move off on Iron Hands. Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. <laughs> let's see it. Urshifu protected. And let's see how much this does to Iron Hands. Takes out the Iron Hands. I mean, that Iron Hands with that minus two close combat really wasn't going to stand much of a chance for much longer. Oh no. Urshifu will die next turn to poison damage. And yeah, he hasn't made any use of the stellar typing. It did hit that first fighting type, but it's really waiting to use that Wicked Blow or that close combat or that Sucker Punch. Yes, but whatever comes out next is going to be badly poisoned as well. Diego, or, Dar or not Diego, Darvon in a bad spot. There's the Frigoraph. Urshifu gets you back with another Urshifu. It's a 2v3 scenario right now for Charles, but I think he's in a better position. Yeah, Charles really is in a good position if he can double protect, if he can get the protect off here. The protect is really what is going to save him. But he's going to go offensive here. I think he's hoping that Urshifu... Well, I don't know. He goes point. for the offensive move on the Fluttermate and the detect on the Urshifu. Let's see it. Oh, this is a dicey situation for Darvon Soup here. I don't know if this one's going to shake out. Every game is going to be a nail-biter here, as this is the Grand Finals. You don't want to lose this one. You're so close to the couple of points. Helping, Helping hand. hand. Urshifu, he should go first, as Trick Room is down. Detect into the Urshifu. I think he's going to try and take out this Fluttermane. Wicked Blow. Who's it at? Into the Fluttermane. The Fluttermane's out. And that is a great kill right there. And now, we're going to move over to the side. This Urshifu's going to get poisoned now, and he's going to faint. Yeah, I really think Daravon needed to take that double protect. That, but you can't double protect in front of Urshifu. Because Urshifu hits right. through protect. This is very dicey. Urshifu definitely going to go down to poison. Now, all that's left is the mystery Pokemon on the side of Daravon. Yeah, Daravon is positioned incredibly well here. It's a very good position. Ooh. Don't know who's not like It's Ursa Luna in that last slot. And that, just on pure raw damage, not going to be able to take that one out very easily. So here's the thing. Do you close combat into that Ursa Luna and hope you get the knockout? I don't know if it doesn't do enough damage. Could, but to, yeah, yeah, I think he must have to. There it is. Close it does. Gets out the Ursa Luna. Oh, wow. It's down to the wire here. Does this Fear Giraffe have enough to take out this Urshifu? Dazzling goes through the Trick Room. I think now it is just a Protect and Stall game. Yeah, this is a Stall game if I've ever seen one. But this Urshifu on the side of Charles, not very fast, only 166 speed. But still slower by a large margin than the Spear Giraffe. This Dazzling Gleam gets protected out. There's the Protect. Oh, the Poison. Hit one more time. Here's the big question. Does he get one shot? Does Dazzling Gleam kill? Not going for the Sucker Punch. The Sucker Punch is what I would do here, but we'll see what happens. Dazzling Gleam. Oh, oh, it lives. Focus! Focus Sash! Right, Focus Sash! We forgot about this Focus Sash. Hung on with the Focus Sash. The Wicked, Wicked Blow. Blow gets the knockout. What an intense game down to the wire. That game wow. could have gone either way. Charles able to pick it up in the end. What a win from Charles getting the first game. And that game is going to be major. And Charles getting his first, first win that we've seen on stream. Yeah, a, a, absolutely incredible mo moves by Charles there. The question is now, if you're Daravon, do you trust what you just played? And do you trust it going forward? Because it did you really well. I think you just run it once again because Charles is very good at adapting. I don't think he needs to adapt right now. I don't think he needs to adapt unduly. What he did worked nearly 
very well. Of course, Darvon had his moments where he was in the leading position, but I think Charles just had the perfect setup there. The Toxic Spice really put the pressure on Daravon to get things moving. You couldn't stall it out. You had to keep things very quick. Yeah, I think it got into a really shaky position there for, I think for both players. Both players got into a very shaky position, but Charles had that endgame win condition and was able to pull it out successfully. Yeah, that focus sash. If he didn't have that, that would have been it. No, that would have been it for sure. I forgot about the focus sash and we have the team <laughs> sheets right in front of us here. Yeah, that was amazing. And now, whew, it could be going Charles' way right here. This could be it. He could be earning the points. And now Darvon, so close. I think he can do it if he rearranges his team, but I think he really needs to rearrange his team because Charles really just went up against pretty much the exact same team, and now he's just running it back. He knows what's good against this. When you see something very wild from Darvon, something unexpected that the last guy did not do. Yeah, we really need to see Darvon really try and play something way out of left field, play something that that Charles is not going to expect, that Charles is not going to be ready for. The question is, what is that? What is, is that Tornadus, maybe? Is that... Yeah. Is it Ogre Pond? I don't know if he brought Ogre Pond that game, did he? I don't think he don't did. I think he did. I think Ogre Pond is just the win condition throughout all these games. If you don't bring Ogre Pond, are you really going to win the game? That That is the true question there, and I would love to see Ogre Pond come out and be that key piece for Darabon to get the win here. But what does... Ogre Pond Hearth Flame really give him is the problem. I feel like the other types have a little bit more variety to them. Especially, it, he's not running follow me. This is just an you know, offensive Ogre Pond. Yeah, it gives him Stomping Tantrum, which might be the key to beating Glamora. That ground type attack is going to be incredibly damaging into Glamora there, and I'd love to see how that works out for him. But once again, this is all physical attackers, which Glamora loves. So yeah. there it is, starting off Glamora once again. Same exact start for Charles on the side of Darvon. We're just going to have to see. It's Urshifu and Tornadus. There's a Tornadus. Like we there's that Tornadus I, th I thought. Yeah, there's a Tornadus. Now, ooh, is there going to be a Terra turn one? That's the question. He could try and start explosive, but I feel like Charles a lot more of a reactive player. Sit back, relax, make sure he knows what's coming. We are seeing the terror here. There it is, it comes out. What is it going to be? That's gonna be Terra Tornado. Terra Steel Tornadus. That Terra Steel Tornado's been a pretty pretty wide fan favorite over today. I don't know why though. I still it's still a very defensive type. Does a lot of wow. damage to Ogre Pod. A ton of damage. It is Huge and there's there. the Brutal Strike to finish off the Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond does nothing for Charles in this game. And that's what we've been seeing. Ogre Pond, very strong pick. But if you just focus it at the beginning. Oh, but the Meteor Beam. Oh, but that's not going to be too not good Not going to do a ton of damage into that Tornadus. Yeah, we're going to see how much it does, though. Special Attack because It is a very strong move. So maybe it'll do a decent amount, but does, not enough to kill. No, just over half there. A ton of really strong damage, but... Really puts Daravon into a great position here. Fluttermane comes out. Again, that Fluttermane able to put a lot of pressure on, but against the Seal type Tornadus, the attacks won't do a ton here. It's very tough to play against Earth Power. Two Tornadus here. Going to the Terra, Terra Fairy. He needs to try and take out this Urshifu. To take some enemies, Pokemon, as fast as he can. Does this Tornadus have Protect? Tornadus, I do it? not believe, has Protect, but it does have Tailwind, which I would be shocked if it doesn't set up this turn. Set up, set up that Tailwind, way. give Urshifu that speed boost. Is facing off right now. This is it. Darvon starting off to a good start. But just like that, Charles might be able to flip the script. We shall see. There's the Terra Fairy on its way to Flutterman. There it is. Too strong. So strong. One of the strongest Terras in the game. Honestly, Fluttermane is such a scary Pokemon. We have not seen a lot today, but when it does arrive, it does a ton of damage. There's the Tailwind, like I thought. There's the Tailwind. Now, Darvon going to have the speed boost the entire time. Close, Close combat. combat. Into the Glamora. Does not take out the Glamora, but it will set up those Toxic Spikes for whatever's in the back. He doesn't have anything to deal with. 
with that, it's going to be a rough going forward. Now we're going to move over. Going to see how this Dazzling Gleam does. Doesn't kill Urshifu because he has the Focus Sash. Urshifu's got the Focus Sash. Urshifu is still up. Now. But what is Glamora going to do here? Earth Power into the Tornadus. That should... That Probably should knocks be. out the Tornadus. Yes. That's going to be a knockout right there. And a critical hit to boot. Sure, why not? <laughs> Throw in the crit. <laughs> so that's going to be good for Charles, but right now Darvon still has this Urshifu up. Going to get in at least one more hit before he goes all the way down. Now. Let's see what is next. Seeing that Ogre Pond fire come out. It's going to take that poison. Can't rely on stall as much with that Ogre Pond now. Urshifu in the back. What do you do if you're Glamora here? Try and sludge bomb. Do you? Spiky shield. Try and stall it out in defensive play. We try and get Urshifu to knock itself out. Yeah, that Urshifu also still under the effects of Tailwind, making it the fastest thing on the field today. I would also assume that Ogre Pond also loving that Tailwind, having an incredibly high speed stat here. Go protect on Flutterman, play defensive, because you know that Urshifu is itching to take out this Flutterman. Time is ticking, down to less than seconds. Here it is. What moves have, have these players committed? Just protect on the Flutterman. Ivy Cudgel. Into the Flutterman, it's blocked. Massive protect here, but does it get the double block? Wicked Blow. Into the Glamora. Takes it down. We'll set up the full Toxic Spikes for whatever's in the back. Very frustrating for Darvone, but no more, there's only one more switch and left on the board, so looking too bad for him. Whatever is going to switch in next is badly poisoned. Looks like it will be Urshifu, the final Pokemon here for Charles. It's a 2v3 situation, but Urshifu very, very low right now. Shape up, dies and gleam. Unleashed. We gotta think there's gonna be a detect on the side of the Urshifu. And maybe even a spiky shield inside of Overpawn. But maybe yeah. not, there's a tailwind still up. Yeah, I think we only have. <sighs> Daravon could oh, win. Sucker AP... Punch. That Sucker Punch, that might do enough. The Ivy Cudgel. Do it, will it be enough? Take out the Fluttermane. That is huge for Daravon. And now we're down. To Charles' last Pokemon in Urshifu versus three more Pokemon. Does Doesn't not take out the Ogre Pond, but the, the Ogre Pond will die to poison. That might be enough. That might be enough that Charles needs. It is a 1v2 situation. Still has a focus session, though. Even if this is a fear giraffe, something super effective. It's the Iron one. Hands. Who do you take out here first? Like you have to go for the Urshifu. If you're a Charles, I do not think that's the Pokemon you wanted to see. You would have loved to see the Ursaluna or the Ogre Paw or the Fragoraph there. The Iron Hands is not the one you wanted to see. I don't know how he wins this one. I don't know either. Don't gotta know. protect this turn. Gotta hope for that poison damage. But that Urshifu does will hit through Detect. Goes for the Fake Out, misses. Yeah, that was good Protect there. This is the only move unless he wanted to waste his turn. Close combat into the Urshifu. Gets it down to its sash. That might be game, folks. This might be the game. It's looking like we're going to go to a game three, and I wouldn't have it any other way here in the grand finals, but unless Charles he has no coverage moves, he has nothing. That'll be able to take both of them out in the next turn. That one does peter out. But I think this is all that she wrote right here. It's at the Urshifu. One last Mon. Unless this misses, which I don't think it could. It can. Close combat. Takes out the Urshifu. All right, chat. We are going to a game three. Here we are. One versus one for the grand finals. For the 50 points that could potentially take you to Worlds. We're going to be here going all the way to the game three. All right, chat. Who do we think is going to win? What are our predictions in chat? <laughs> this has been intense games all day. Just 
knowing Charles's track record, I think this might go his way. He's very adaptable. He's just going to try and play around this tornado. I think the skill Terra tornadoes really threw him off there. We haven't seen that in a while. We haven't seen that be used successfully, but that was... I asked why you would ever Terra Steel. Now I definitely know. Yeah, that Terra Steel kept it alive. And... That's what Terra is for sometimes. You need something to just break up the tie sometimes because these teams are so evenly matched. And sometimes Charles even looked like he was the favorite going in at the beginning of this game. But now, he's gonna, should he rearrange his team? Do you think he played his team to the That's max optimal, optimal plays there? Yeah, that is the question. We do have a prediction getting started in chat here, so be ready for that. You can vote on who you think is going to win this... This grand finals are best of three. Who is it going to be? I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess Darvon. I think he found his flow. I think he's going to get the reverse sweep. He's going to Charles Charles. He's going <laughs> to get him at his own game of adapt, adapt, adaptability. <laughs> yeah, I think both teams are very strong here. I think Darvon has more modes in his team. I think so. But... Honestly, if Charles plays his good, it's all up in the air. It I, really is. It's the, These players are both so good, so evenly matched. And what a first grand finals here in this weekend. It's so exciting. All the way in the game three. I don't know who's going to win. I am just so eager to get inside this next match. And Chat right now, behind Daravon. We'll see how that closes up. A lot of hype behind Daravon right now, though. Daravon is looking to be the favorite after that last match, but we can't let recency bias get us good. Charles, always after he loses the next one, he's always won. He's always made the comeback, so I think he could potentially do this. Listen, chat, if you want to be here for our next events, we're going to have a special charity-based event on April 14th, and we're going to have a, our big next mid-season finals this May 17th, 18th, 9th, and 20th. Let's get into the grand finals here. Yeah, we're bringing out the Charles Chiyu, the Charles Classic, starting us off here, along with the Ogre Pond. Now, I'd like to see Charles go a little bit more on the defensive side. He's always been very aggressive with his Ogre Pond, and manages to get taken out within the first turn or so. Now, Darvon using what worked in the last game, Urshifu Tornadus, to start us off here. Going to Dynamax early. Dynamax into that Ogre Pond. We're going to get that big water Ogre Pond here. Special As always, breaking the stream when it Dynamaxes. And the special defense boost is going to be huge here, especially against this Tornadus. Going oh. for the follow me. Using this Ogre Pond as a tank, trying to absorb all the damage. Oh, it's not game. Dynamax. Yeah, this is Terrastalization. <laughs> I know what game we're playing. <laughs> it's a long day, but we're here for it. There's the Heat Wave. Heat Wave. Wow! Oh, look at that! I didn't think that would do that much damage. Is there damage? a burn? Is there a burn on either side? We couldn't see. I don't think there's a burn. Ogre Pond lives. No burn. No burns. Ogre Pond still is alive here. Ogre Pond fine with, <laughs> with going down. Just as long as it's Chiyu. If Chiyu lives and Chiyu picks up the double knockout here. That would be massive. Goes to the detect. It's not going to take out the Urshifu, is it? But now, Arvon. There's the follow me. Going to lose this Tornadus. There's the Tailwind. It's the setup before dying. Tornadus did his job here. There's the Heat Wave coming out from the Chiyu. There's one and a crit. <laughs> and on the one crit HP. because why not? Why not? Why not end it with a crit? It's the grand finals. These Pokemon are giving it their all. And now, Ogre Pond being answered. Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is out. Will this be the Pokemon that Terra's to block that Chiyu from just heat waving its way to victory? Potentially, potentially. Do we see the swap out of the Chiyu is the question. Or the Ogre Pond swap as well. Now. On the sacrifice for this Chi Yu. Using Follow Me, trying to get all the attacks to come its way. Just so this Chi Yu can get one more overheat. The Terra comes out though. The Terra, I think this is going to be Terra Chi. Yep. Terra Ogre Pond into that fire type. There it is. The attack boost is going to be huge here. There it is. In body aspect. Attack raised. Now with the Heart Flame Mask, follow, the me. follow me. 
Looks like this is going to be the last of we see of Charles's Ogre Bond. Ivy cut, Joel. There it is. That's going to take him out. There it is. The final blow has been dealt with this Ogre Bond. He's finally fainted. Now, does this Urshifu land its strike? Close combat into the fish. Into the Chiyu. Does the Chiyu take it? No, Chiyu does not. This Chiyu was all damage. And now, when it looked like it was all going Charles' Chiyu's way, in one mere turn, it has just been reversed by Darvon. What is left? Urshifu and Fluttermane with the Tailwind up. You can protect Saul the Tailwind for another turn. And then go from there. There's a sparkle. Shifu also being unleashed right here. Two very strong Pokemon, but are they strong enough to bring Charles back from the break? Daravon is in a great position here. Two more turns of Tailwind. Got Sucker Punch. It's a big call here. Still with the Shifu might go for Detect. And goes for the Protect. Fluttermane might not that though. Looks like you're gonna maybe go for something else. Maybe a dazzling gleam, maybe something offensive, but no. I think I think Darvon went for detect on the side of Urshifu, maybe. Suck no, into the land. takes out the Urshifu. It's gonna be huge. And now the 3v2 has been turned into a 2v2. Gets the read correct! It is a 2v2. Brilliant, and it's only one more turn of Tailwind remaining on the side of Darvon. Iron Hands is back out. Going for the Detect. One more turn to Tailwind. Dazzling Gleam is up. Go He's going to double Protect. If he gets the double Protect, Charles is in a great position here. Charles is known for the gamble. Fails! Double Protect fails. He goes for the Detect. Protects himself. Goes. This is the Fake Out. Now, protected itself. Ivy Cudgel does this knockout. Fluttermane. Fluttermane goes down. Folks, we are we are almost at the end here. This is it. This is for the grand finals right here. Darvon one v two. Charles in a very tough spot. He doesn't have focus sash though. So if he does get the one shot taken, he has at least one or two more turns left in him. He needs to get this done. He needs to double to both these Pokemon, but Ogre Pond goes first. Ivy Cudgel lands. Break the sash here. Breaks the sash. And now, does he go second or does he go last? That is the question. Goes the Wicked Blow goes off, but he picks the wrong oh, target. Doesn't, doesn't get the one shot either. Ladies and gentlemen, Daravon is winner. our winner. Daravon of the first ever mid-season challenge here at St. Clair. Winner of the Golden Trophy. The first winner of our Grand Finals. And what a winner he is. The what an absolute incredible match there. What an incredible match all around. Charles, known for bringing back from the brink, but Darvon really pulled a Charles, beat him at his own game, got the reverse sweep, and won the grand finals. Absolutely. That was an incredible set of games there. What an absolute insane play from Darvon to win that final set there and take home the victory in our day one finals there. Yeah, what a victory. That was just very intense, you know, that felt so equal. It, feel like it, it feels like it could have gone either way. It was just the way the strategies worked out. It seemed like Charles wanted to go for more risky plays, and they just didn't end up paying off. Darvon was way more consistent, just played the game how it was meant to be played there. It was very concise, knew what he was doing, very strategic, and got out with the win. Yeah, really, if Charles is able to get that, maybe if Charles gets that double protect off, maybe he comes back and he can get that win, having both Pokemon alive. But as soon as that Fluttermane went down, Darvon had it in the bag and was able to pick up the win. Yeah, that was it. And honestly, props to Darvon. He brought it back. He didn't lose his mental right there. He kept the morale high after losing that first game because you really don't want to lose after you get to finals. And props to Charles. He took the loss like a champ. But 
you know, the points are going to be going over to Doravon. So congratulations. And we also have a trophy to present them a little later. Yeah. And remember, folks, this is only day one of our event. We come back tomorrow at 2 p.m. for another full day of Pokemon, another eight rounds. If you want to be here, you can show up. 2 p.m. registration opens. Come play Pokemon. Come enjoy the space and have some fun with some other trainers. Yeah, there's so many people here today and so many friendly faces. It's always so fun to be here. And if you can't make it this weekend, of course, there's more coming down the line isn't there eric yeah we have i'm pretty sure we have a a premier challenge on friday the 22nd we also have a big charity event we are hosting on april 14th if you want to come out and support charity support extra life which is what some of the players funds go into it's the charity stream we do every year and if you want the next mid-season challenge we have a four-day event on may 17th 18th 19th and 20th we all have details and codes for you for hotel staying at the residence on st Clair. coming to you all very shortly yeah, it was an amazing day today. And what was your favorite Pokemon you said you, you saw today? I think it's I, I think it's hard to argue against Ogre Pond here today. I think Ogre Pond is just the MVP from today. Did so much damage, really won the match for so many different people. It's hard to argue that Ogre Pond wasn't the MVP. It'll be interesting to see how all the players today take all of the information and change it up for tomorrow. Yeah, Six of our top eight players were on stream today, so their teams are out there for players to study going into tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting seeing what happens tomorrow, how the meta is going to be shaken up. If I'm going to say my favorite I saw today, I'm going to say Glamora. That Glamora, yeah. Glamora, very underrated, you know, newer Pokemon, not anybody's favorite so far, but... Honestly, Glamora is very entertaining to watch. The Toxic Spike setup is very interesting. The Meteor Beam Power Herb is just so fun to watch as well. Very intense to see. Oh, does it one shot or does it not? It was a very exciting to watch. But overall, it's been such an amazing day. Yeah. Again, congratulations to all the competitors out today. A big 26 people out today. We hope to see more of you out tomorrow. Yes, if you come out tomorrow, there'll be more fun to be had. But with all that said, we're going to start to close it out here. Eric, any last words before I close it all the way out? I don't think so. I think thank you, everyone, for watching today. We'll see you back tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody.